So this is how our distribution table is going to look like. I have already drawn it and filled everything, but I'll explain what I have done or what you are expected to do. So uh, on our beam, we have uh, five joints in total. We have joint A, joint B, joint C, joint D, as well as joint E. Now, on joint A, we have uh, on the right hand side of joint A, we have member AB or span AB. For the joint B, we have uh, two members, that is BA and BC, and both of them are written there. On joint C, we have member CB and CD. They are also written at joint C. At joint D, we have member DC and DE, also written up there. And for the joint E, we have member ED. From there, we had calculated the distribution factors. For member BA, for joint B, we had 15 over 29, BC 14 over 29. For member CB, 32 over 47, CD 15 over 47. For members DC1, DE0. Fixed end moments, we had also calculated them. So each of them has been written at its required position. Then after that, we are going to balance D. Since beyond D, the member DE is overhanging. So we must balance D. And we do that by determining the difference in the two moments. That is, we determine the excess moment and we will find that the excess moment is positive 1.34. So what we do when we are determining the excess moment, we change sign. So this is going to be negative 3.16 plus 4.5, which is positive 1.34. Then after balancing, we are going to carry over. And remember the carryover factor is a half. So we are going to carry half of 1.34 to joint C, which will be 0 0.67 and then we can now have the initial moments that is a fixed end moment we are going to write them here again so we have the fi a fixed end moment for member a b member b a member b c member c b now for member c d we are going to add the fixed end moment with what we have carried over that is 0 0.67 which will give us a negative 4.60 the same case on member DC, we are going to add these two uh, moments, which will give us positive 4.5, and then this one is going to be negative 4.5. And you'll find that now the joint D is now balanced. The resultant of the moments is zero. That is the sum of anti-clockwise moment and that of clockwise moment. Then after writing our initial moments, we are going to distribute. And when we are distributing, we do the same thing, that is find the excess moment between these two moments and do that by changing signs. So we are going to have minus 7.35 plus 9.38, which is plus 2.73. So that 2.73, we are going to distribute it on each member with the value of the distribution factor. So on member BA, we are going to have 2.73 times 15 over 29, which is 1.05. On member BC, we are going to have 2.73 times 14 over 29, which is 0 0.98. Then on member C, the ex excess moment will be given by minus 9.38 change signs plus 4.60 which will be given by minus 4.78. So that minus uh, 4.78, we are going to distribute each, uh, that is, we are going to distribute on each member by its distribution factor. So on member CB, we are going to have that 2 over, uh, over 47 times minus 4.78, which is negative 3.25. On member CD, Negative 4.78 times 15 over 47, that is uh, negative 1.53. Then the others are going to be 0. Definitely 4.5 minus 4.5 is 0. Then after distributing, we carry over. So 
half of 1.05 is carried over to joint A. That is half of 1.05 is 0 0.53. We come to member B. We carry half of 0 0.98 to joint C. And that's going to be positive 4.9. Then on uh, member C, B, on joint C, we have negative 3.25. Carry it over to joint B. Carry half of it to joint B, which would be negative 1.63. All the others are going to be zero. This one we are not going to carry over here because we have already balanced D. So if you carry over again, you are going to make it unbalanced. And we don't want that. Then after distributing, we after carrying over, we distribute again. So we do that by changing sign. Here we have 0 plus 1.63. This is now going to be positive 1.63. Then we distribute on each member of uh, joint B with the distribution factor. So this is going to be plus 1.63 times 15 over 29, which is 0 0.84. On this uh, member again, 1.63 times 14 over 29, that is 0 0.79. Then we come to joint uh, C. On member CB, uh, on joint B, we have an excess moment of negative 0 0.49. Change this sign from positive to negative. So negative 0 0.49 times that 2 over 47, that is negative 0 0.33. Negative 0 0.49 times 15 over 47 on member CD, that is negative 0 0.16. The others are going to be zeros. After distributing, we carry over. Carry over half of 0 0.84 on joint B to joint A, which is 0 0.42. Then we come to joint B. Carry half of 0 0.79 from joint B to joint C, which is 0 0.40. Carry over half of 0 0.33 to joint B, which is going to be 0 0.33 divided by 2, that is negative 0 0.17, and then the others are going to be zeros. After carrying over, we distribute again. Remember, we are going to do to follow these steps until we arrive at the required degree of precision. So the steps here are distribute, carry over, distribute, carry over, distribute, carry over. <laughs> Very interesting, eh? Distribute, carry over, and finally distribute. We always end at distribute. You can't end at carrying over. So after carrying over, we distribute um, again. So uh, on member B, we have an excess moment of positive 0 0.17. Change this sign from negative to positive. So positive 0 0.17 times 15 over 29 is positive 0 0.09. 0 0.17 times 14 over 29 is 0 0.08. Then we come to joint C. Ex excess moment, negative 0 0.40 after changing the positive sign to negative. So negative 4 uh, 4.40 times that 2 over 47 is negative 0 0.27. Negative uh, 0 0.40 times 15 over 47 is negative 0 0.13. The others are zeros. Then we carry over, carry over half of 0 0.09 on member, that is on joint B to joint A. So half of 0 0.09 is positive 0 0.05. Then carry over half of negative 0 0.27 from joint C to joint B, which will be negative 0 0.13. On uh, joint B we have positive 0 0.08, carry half of it to joint C, which will be half of 0 0.08 which is 0 0.04, the others are zeros. Then we distribute again. We have not yet arrived at the required degree of precision. So distributing, we are going to have um, 0 plus 0 0.13. So here we have an excess moment of positive 0 0.13. So 0 0.13 times 15 over 29 is 0 0.07. 0 0.13 times 14 over 29 is positive 0 0.06. Come to this uh, joint, joint C. We have an excess moment of negative 0 0.04. So negative 0 0.04 times that 2 over 47, that is negative 0 0.03. Then 
negative 0 0.04 times 15 over 47 that is negative 0 0.01 so that's what we got then after that we carry over so we are going to carry over half of 0 0.07 to joint a which will be positive 0 0.04 then half of 0 0.06 on joint b will be carried over to joint c then half of negative 0 0.03 on joint C will be carried over to joint B, which is negative 0 0.03. Then finally we distribute. So we, uh, this part is going to be 0. We are going to have uh, excess moment here is positive 0 0.02. Change this negative sign to positive. Then 0 0.02 times 15 over 29 is positive 0 0.01. 0 0.02 times 14 over 29 is 0 0.01. We come to joint C. We have an excess moment of negative 0 0.03. Change this positive sign to negative. So negative 0 0.03 times 32 over 47 is negative 0 0.02. Negative 0 0.03 times 15 over 47 is negative 0 0.01. Then the others are zeros. And then finally we are going to have the final moments. Uh, that is uh, after arriving at the required uh, degree of precision. We cannot continue from there. So, the final moments will be given by initial moments. We are going to add all the moments from the initial moments all the way to the final distribution. So, here we are going to have minus 9.80 plus 0 0.53 plus 0 0.42 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.04 which will be minus 8.76 then we do the same on this part we add all these uh, bending moments or all these moments i mean we are going to get positive 9.41 on member bc we do the same adding all these uh, moments minus 9.38 plus 0 0.98 Minus 1.63 plus 0 0.79 minus 0 blah blah blah. We add all that till we arrive to negative 9.41. On this part again, we do the same. We get positive 6.44, negative 6.44 on member CD. Then finally, here we are just going to, to take this one direct because all the others are zeros. And when you look at uh, each joint, you will find that the resultant moment is zero. Resultant moment is zero, meaning that all the joints now are balanced and the beam is not going to fail in any, in any way. Then finally, after getting the final support moments, we are now going to determine the bending moments due to vertical loads. Remember, these are support moments. That is, moments at all the supports. So we need the moments due to vertical loads. So starting with the span AB, the bending moment at F will be given by WAB divided by L since that span is loaded with a point load. So this is going to be W which is uh, 10 multiplied by A which is 3 multiplied by B which is 4 then divide by the span which is 7 and that is going to give us a bending moment at F of 17.14 kilo newtons meter so that is the bending moment at F then on member BC so you go to the span BC on span BC the maximum bending moment since that span is loaded with a UDL will be given by WL squared divided by 8. And this will be given by 4.5 times the span, which is 5 meters span BC. So that is going to be 5 squared. We divide this by 8. And when we do so, we are going to get a maximum bending moment of 14.06 kilo newtons meter so that is the maximum bending moment for member b c then we go to the member c to d so for span 
CD. Span CD. The bending moment at G. Bending moment at G will be given by WAB divided by L. This will be W, 9 kilonewtons, A, 1.5 meters, B, 2.5 meters, divided by the span, which is 4 meters. So, when we do so, we are going to get a bending moment at G of 8.44 kilonewtons meter. So, those are the bending moments. Then, after that, we are now going to plot our bending moment diagram. Let's start with the bending moments due to vertical loads. Starting in the span AB, we have a bending moment of 17.14. So, let it be at the highest point here. So, 17.14 will be plotted like this. Awesome. So, this is a bending moment of 17.14 kilo newtons meter. Then for the span BC, the maximum bending moment is 14.06. So 14.06 approximately. This is going to be a smooth curve since the beam and uh, the span BC is loaded with a point that is a UDL. It is going to be a smooth curve. I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible because of yeah. So, this is 14.06 uh, kilo newtons meter. Then, for the span C to D, we have 8.44. So, 8.44, approximately there. So, we are going to plot it like this. Very good. So, this is uh, 8.44 kilo newtons meter then we plot the bending moments that is uh, due to the that is we plot the support moments the support moments now the support moment at uh, support a is 8.76 so 8.76 above 8.44 so let's say here yeah. so this way we have 8.76 Kilo newtons meter that is joined to the horizontal line. Then on the support B we have 9.41, 9.41 about this point. So we are going to join 8.76 to 9.41. So this is 9.41 kilo newtons meter at B. We are using these moments. At C we have 6.44. So 6.44 about that point so we join 9.41 to 6.44 so that is what we are going to have 6.44 kilo newtons meter then joint b we have 4.5 so 4.5 about that point so we join 6.44 to 4.5 so 4.5 and then the moment at uh, e is zero so join 4.5 to zero at e which is at that point awesome so this is now our complete bending moment diagram this is negative bending moment this one is positive so this is a positive negative that is a positive this is negative this one is positive and finally this is negative then finally we are going to a uh, shade off the outline of our bending moment for it to be very clear, very smart, and visible. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's now how we plot the bending moment diagram for such a beam using the moment distribution method. So, we thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Every time we record a video and upload it, you will be notified. So, let's meet in yet another lesson.